Hi again, this is Jeff, your ProtoPy expert answering your ProtoPy questions. A little while ago, I did an Ask ProtoPy video showing you how you can make a mock typing simulation when you want to use a prototype as a prop in a TV show or a movie. Well, one of the comments to that video was from Eric, and he said, this is fantastic. Thank you very much, Eric. He also asked, is there a simple way to be able to rig the text to appear to be deleted and retyped? Yeah, yeah, there is, and I'm going to show you how to do it. First, let's look back at what we did before. If you recall, this was an idea where, um, let's say you're in a scenario and somebody gets a text, I'm with Amy, I could really use your help right now. And we made it such that you can tap anywhere in this mock keyboard and it would type something and then send a message. What we want to happen now is, here, let's reset this again, is we want to be able to type a little bit of a message and then maybe before this person sends it, they decide, you know what? This is not what I want to say. I'd like to delete it and type something else. So let's do that. First thing I want to do, I have the text to type in my variable here. And let's change this to something. Let's add a bit more drama to this. I can't deal with your drama right now. Oh, I didn't type that right. There we go. I can't deal with your drama right now. Let's preview that, see what that looks like. So I'm typing, I'm with Amy, I could really use your help right now. I can't deal with your drama right now. Actually, it doesn't fit. Let's just change it to, I can't deal with your drama. Keep it on one line. All right, I'm with Amy and I could really use your help right now. I can't deal with your drama. Now, before I tap one more time, because what that will do is that will post the message. What I want to do is when I start typing again, I want it to erase that. And then I want to type something else. Let's make our second message here. So I'm going to make a new variable for the scene. And our first variable was called text to type. I'm going to call this second text to type. And because this is going to be in three phases, the first phase is typing out the first message. The second phase is erasing that first message. And the third phase is writing the new message. I'm going to keep, I'm going to create a variable that's going to keep track of what phase I happen to be on. So I'm going to make another variable and I'm going to call this phase for this scene, phase. And I'm going to default this to one because I'm going to start on phase one. All right, so in my second text to type, let's change this to a text, uh, text type variable. And this one will be hang type coming soon. Coming soon, there we go. Hang type coming soon. So the first message that she types or he types, I can't do with your drama. And then that gets erased and the, the message that will eventually be sent will be hang tight, coming soon. We need to make some decisions. We need to know what phase we're on. So in phase one, we want to do exactly what we're doing right now. So in our tap trigger here, let's add a condition. And the condition will be if I'm on phase one. If I'm on phase one, I'm going to do this. And in my detect here, I need to add extra conditions, extra tests in my condition here. So if this condition is if I'm less than number of characters, less than or equal to, then I'm adding to the message. And I also want to do this only during phase one. And in this second one here, this is when I've reached the end. I don't want to do all of this stuff, but I'm not going to delete it because I want to reuse this for when we eventually do phase three. So I'm just going to turn them off right now. And I'm going to add instead. I'm going to assign a value to phase and I want to go to phase two, but I don't want to do it immediately. What I want there to be is a slight pause. So that way your actor knows when to stop typing. So what's going to happen is I'm going to change this to a phase zero and our tap condition is not going to respond to a phase zero. So essentially by changing this to a phase zero, it turns off typing for a brief amount of time. So we're going to change phase to zero and then I'm going to add another assign trigger and then I'm going to assign phase two but I want to delay this. And you can delay this to whatever it is. I'm just going to add a one second delay. So for one second amount of time, at the end of typing the first phase, no more typing will be, accept, uh, will be accepted. And then when you start typing again, we're going to do the erasing. So now 
I'm going to add another condition into my tap trigger. You're going, to, you're going to recall that every time I tap this mock keyboard, this tap is going to be fired here. So when my phase is 2 equals 2, then instead of adding 1 to the number of taps, I'm actually going to subtract 1. I'm going to show you why this works in a second. So actually, let me delete that. I'm just going to duplicate this one. So I'm going to copy Command-C or Control-C on Windows and then paste it under this condition. And then I'm just going to modify this to be number of taps minus 1. Now you'll recall in our condition here when we our number of taps is equal to or less than the length of our text, we're essentially writing out the number of characters from the left end. As we decrease the number of taps, then it's going to decrease the number of characters from the left side. So this actually works for both our phase 1 and our phase 2. So let's modify this condition. We want our phase to be less than or equal or sorry, greater than or equal to phase 1. And I want our phase to be less than or equal to 2. So basically what this means is during phase 1 or phase 2, this is going to execute. This should work. So we'll go to preview here. I'm with Amy. I could really use your help right now. I'm going to start typing. I can't deal with your drama. And right now I can't type anymore. And there's that one second delay. Now, actually, let's turn on the debug so we can see that in action. I'm going to turn the debug for number of taps, and I'm going to turn on the debug for the phase. And let's just move these up here out of our way. It's going to keep it up here. What we should do is see the number of taps increase until we reach the end of our first phrase. And then our phase should change to zero. And then after a second later, it'll turn to phase two. So let's now see this in the preview. I'm going to start typing. I can't deal with your drama. All right, one more tap. It turned to phase zero for a second and then turned to phase two. Now, if I start typing, it's starting to delete. And it doesn't matter where I tap on my keyboard. This is just meant to be a prop here. I could tap the delete key, but it doesn't matter. I can tap anywhere. Okay, and I've now deleted all the way. At this point, our number of taps will continue to decrease. So we need to handle when the number of taps reaches zero and we're on phase two. So in my detect here, I'm going to add another condition. Condition, if I am on phase two and number of taps equals zero. So essentially, if I've reached zero, I'm going to do something. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did here. But in this, this chime, I'm going to change it to phase three. So I'm going to copy these ones and paste them under this new condition. And immediately, I'm going to set it to phase zero again to disable typing. And then after a second, I'm going to turn on phase three. I'm going to add another condition. And this time, I'm going to do this condition when we're on phase three. Phase equals three. And I want to do almost the same time that I'm doing here. Uh, but instead of, text to, uh, instead of text to type, I want second text to type. So let's copy this, and we're going to modify it. And I'm going to paste this under here. And I'm just going to modify this formula here. So instead of text to type, we're going to change this to say second text to type. And I also have to handle phase three in my tap condition here. Now, our phase three is going to do the same thing as our phase one. I'm increasing the number of taps by one. However, my condition here, I can't do this. I can't do, say, um, phase three equal or phase equals three. What this is telling Protopy is that if phase equals 1 and phase equals 3, which can't be possible because it's going to be one or the other, I can't say if phase 1 or phase 3. I can't do that in Protopy. So I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to add another condition under here instead for phase 3. So phase equals 3, and I want to do the same thing that I'm doing here. So I'm going to copy this and increase my number of taps again. This should now type, erase, and type again. Type. I can't deal with your drama. Now typing is off for a second. I'm back onto phase two and I'm going to type again, removing everything that I just typed. And it should now go to phase three. There we go. Hang tight. Coming soon. All right. Now we want to handle when we are at the end of this phrase and then post that message. So remember how I said I'm just going to turn these off. We're going to reuse these now. So our condition is when I'm on phase three, phase equals three, and the number of taps 
is greater than, and you'll recall we used the formula for this, and it was the length. But in this case, it's not length of text to type, it's length of our second text to type. So second, oops, second text to type. There we go. I'm gonna say okay to that. And then what I'm gonna do is take these four items and we are gonna move them down under here and then turn them back on. And this should now give us our full experience. Let's preview this. Where are you? I'm with Amy. I could really use your help right now. Ugh, always bugging me. Ugh, I can't deal with your drama. Uh, you know what? I shouldn't write that. Eh, okay, let's back this up. I guess I'll help. Hang tight. Coming soon. And then one more, and it posts the message. Oh, I can't deal with your drama. All right, we have the wrong message there because our text is writing the text to type phrase into our speech bubble, and we want that to be second text to type. So let's just modify this second text to type. Now you, you'll notice that I just typed it into the box without opening the formula thing. You can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. You could do it either way. All right, let's preview this now. I can't deal with your drama. Now nah, maybe I shouldn't write that. Okay, let's back this out. Here's what I'm going to type. Hang tight. Coming soon. There we go. And that's how you would do it for the mobile experience. Now to do it for the desktop experience um, is almost the same thing, but I'm going to use a little trick here. You'll remember that the way that this worked is I had to make a um, I had to make an event for every single keyboard press in here. And if we were to add in all of these conditions, I would have to copy all of these into every single one of these. And that makes editing things a nightmare. So I'm going to use a little bit of a trick to actually make this a bit easier to manage. First of all, let's put in, we're going to create a, another trigger here. So if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I'm going to add a trigger and this will be a receive trigger. And this is a t technique I like to use. I like to use send and receive uh, within my scene so that way I can reuse the same logic over and over again. And I'm gonna make a, a message here and I call it type, capital. There we go, type. And I also like to rename my receives and I'll call this type. And what I'll do is I'll just move it up above all this key stuff here. So we'll I'm gonna move this above and we'll put it into here. And I'm gonna handle this logic here, the assign of increasing number types. I'm going to put it in here. Um, and also, we're going to need our extra variables over here. So let's do this. For this scene, I'm going to make a second variable called second text to type. And I need a phase variable for this scene, phase. And what I'll do is I'll take, I'm going to copy this, my protopy. I'm going to make this the second text to type, make this text. And in my first message will be best prototyping software, as if I'm going to do a search. And then I realize at the end, you know what? I don't need to search. I know the right one. I'm just going to go to Protopie's website. OK. We're going to add a condition under our receive here. And this will be where we detect what phase we're on. So when phase equals 1, and I'm going to move this assign under here. And then what I need to do is I don't want to directly increase number of keys whenever these are pressed. So instead, I'm going to do a send from here. So I'm going to send the message and I'm going to send the message type and I'm going to remove this assign. So instead of this directly increasing, I'm just going to use the send to execute whatever is under here. And now this means that if I need to change my conditional logic, I only need to change it one place. All I need to do now is copy this send and put it into each of these keys here. right? And like we did before, I've already gone the long way and I made all of these already for you. So all of these, I'm gonna turn this on here, all of these have the send in here. So right now, this should work exactly as it did before. So let's preview this. And now as I start typing, okay, that didn't work. Why didn't it work? We've received type. Our condition is phase equals one and we didn't default phase to be one, did we? Okay, so now this should work like it did before. So when I start typing, best prototyping software, 
uh, and of course it's bring up the protopy's website but what i want to do is i want to erase that and then retype protopy.io so we're going to do the exactly the same thing we did before so our condition here is not going to run all of this stuff this is what loads our website here so i'm going to turn those off for now and for both of these these are going to be for when phase equals one same with this one phase equals one and then what i need to do is when we've reached the end here we're going to do our assign and i'm going to change my phase to zero momentarily to turn off typing and then i'll duplicate that and i did that with command d by the way on my keyboard or control d on windows and i'm going to turn this to phase two but i'm going to delay it by one second and in my receive here, I have my condition for when we're on phase one. I need to make another condition here. And let's just duplicate this and modify. So Command-D or Control-D on Windows. And we'll change this to when phase equals two. And we'll modify our assign to be minus one. Oops, that didn't work. Minus one. There we go. Now when I preview this and I start typing, best prototyping software. And then I should be able to start backing out okay that didn't work let's turn on our debug debug is a great way to um, keep tabs on what's going on so when things don't go right um, you can turn these on so I'm going to turn the debug for a number of keys typed and for phase and let's move these where we can see them so we're on what phase we're on and number of keys typed okay now when I preview this and I start typing I'm on phase one now I'm on phase two and I'm not backspacing. So, okay, you know what we didn't do? We didn't put in our condition over here. We didn't change this to be um, when it's greater than or equal to one and then add in the second condition here. So that way it works for two as well. Less than or equal to two. So if it's either one or two, that's gonna work. So preview this, best prototyping software. Now I'm on phase two, I'm typing more, that deletes. Now let's handle our phase three. So we're gonna add our additional condition into our detect. And now when our number of keys typed equals zero and I'm on phase three, so, or phase two I mean, phase two, and number of keys typed equals zero, we're gonna to move to phase three. Copy these guys, Command C or Control C on Windows, paste them here, and I'm gonna modify this to be moving to phase three. And we need to handle now phase three in our typing. So I'm gonna add another condition. Remember that we wanna do the same thing that's here. So we're gonna add a condition for phase three. And I am once again going to increase our number of keys typed by one. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it under our third condition. And now let's add our final conditions in our detect here. So our condition for when we are in phase three and number of keys typed is less than or equal to a formula, the length of second text to type. And I'm gonna copy this here, paste it here and modify it. So that way it's using second text to type as my source, second text to type. There we go. And my final condition for when we've reached the end. So when I'm in phase three and number of keys typed is greater than, use a formula, length. Oops. That's the difference, by the way. You only get the the help here, the drop-down help when you have the function, the, the formula box expanded. You have it closed, you don't get these drop-downs. Second text to type. I'm gonna say okay to that. And then we're gonna copy all these things we turned off. Oh, it doesn't like that. Why doesn't it like it? Oh, right, because I used the wrong bracket here. There we go. It's always a good indication that something's gone wrong, by the way. Protopy colors your triggers and responses orange when there's a problem. There we go, that's good. And let's now take these and drag them under my bottom condition and turn them back on. Now this should give us our experience. I'm gonna start typing. Best prototyping software. Oh, wait a minute, I know what it is. 
All right, so I tried hitting the delete key, by the way. You can't add a, um, you can't add one of these keys to the delete key. It doesn't support that. Um, if I, you take a look at all the keys that are supported, you have A to Z, you have zero to nine, um, enter, escape, space, tab, and then you got your arrow keys. You can't actually use the backspace key or the delete key in your um, in your triggers here. So you got to tap something else. Okay, I'm going to preview this now. Best prototyping software. Oh wait, I know what the best prototyping software is. Let me delete all of this. Protopie.io. There we go. There you go, easy as pie. This is now taking your mock typing example to the next level where you can simulate deleting text and retyping. If you've run into a snag with any of your pies and you'd like to ask us for help, just check out the link in the description below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.